Hello, a great welcome to this series on Abacus. Myself, Jarajan P. This is tutorial number 7 and explains the analysis of a simple bottle lap joint using Abacus. So, let us first read the problem statement. So, as shown in the figure, the lap joint essentially consists of two plates, each of a thickness of 10 mm, connected using a single bolt. The bolt is of diameter M24, that is, a, the shank diameter will be 24 mm. Both the plate as well as the bolt are made of a steel with an E value of 2 into 10 to 5 newton per mm square and a Poisson's ratio of 0.3. Here, essentially, we will consider only an elastic analysis. So, as shown here, one end of the plate is pinned with all the translations restraint, and the other end of the plate is subjected to a Pressure loading of 100 MPa. So the dimensions of the bolt are taken from the Euro code. As shown here, the head diameter is a 40 mm. The head thickness is 15 mm. So this is my head diameter, 40 mm. Head thickness is 15 mm. And the shank diameter will be this will be 24 mm. And the shank length, this top length will be two times obviously two times this plate thickness that is 20 mm. A three-dimensional view of the lap joint that is modeled in abacus is shown here. So to improve the visibility of this tutorial, it will be presented in two parts and part A will cover essentially the modules such as part, property, assembly and step, whereas the part B will consider modules such as interaction, load, job and interpretation of results through visualization. So let me take you to the abacus. So in this tutorial, we have two parts. One is a rectangular plate and the other one is uh, the bolt. So let us uh, start creating these parts. We'll start with rectangular plate. We'll provide the name as the plate and it will be 3D modeling space, deformable and the solid shape at extrusion. And we'll uh, keep this as 500 mm. Continue. We'll draw a rectangle of dimensions 200 by 100. Set this dimension as 200. Set the height as 100 mm. So now locate the bolt hole. The diameter of the hole will be 24 mm. So draw a circle. Keep the radius of the circle as uh, 24 by 2, that is a uh, 12 mm. Now, locate this bolt hole properly for the edges. This distance as given in the sketch is 50 mm. And from the bottom, the center line is at 50 mm. This means we have completed the sketching for the plate. Now we are ready for the extrusion. So done. Now the thickness of the plate is 10 mm. So the depth will be added as 10 mm. Okay. So we can say that yes. The part for the rectangular plate is ready now. Now we shall proceed for the creating the part for the bolt. So we shall do the name as the bolt. And the modeling space will be 3D. Type will be deformable. It will be solid. And it will be created through the extrusion. So we shall give a smaller dimension here, 100 mm. Continue. Okay. First, let us start creating the head. So draw a circle. And the radius of the circle will be the head diameter divided by 2. The head diameter is 40 mm. That means 40 by 2 is 20 mm. So let us keep the radius at 20 mm. 20 mm. Okay. Now let us start extruding this head. Done. And the thickness of the head it is as given in the sketch is 15 mm. 
okay fine so we have created the head now we shall proceed to create the shank and the other head portion as well using the same procedure so here we will use the create is already through the extrude so just press it it will ask you select the plane and next it will ask you a select a edge also so we will select this right edge now we will draw another circle and this will be representing the shank we will set its radius as 12 mm that is 24 by 2 okay now we are ready for extruding it and the depth of extrusion it will be the sum of the thickness of the two plates that will be the shank length that is 10 plus 10 that is 20 mm and as you can see that the abacus has indicated through the normal direction the direction of the extrusion so it's acceptable to us okay so you can see that yes the shank portion is also ready now one more head component is to be added to this part we will use the same procedure so so select a plane so this will be my plane and this will be my edge now i will again draw a circle that will represent my head so i shall set the radius of this circle as again Twenty-four. That is a twenty-four by two. That is nothing but twelve mm. So okay, we'll keep it as a radius as a uh, the forty forty by two. That is a twenty mm. Sorry, twenty mm. Okay. So now we shall proceed for uh, the extrusion. Done. So. Obviously, the thickness will be 15 mm. 15. Okay, so you can say that yes, we have uh, made successfully the part for the bolt. Now we can steadily proceed for uh, the next module that's a property. Here we are providing a elastic analysis. This means that uh, we need to provide only two parameters that is the Young's modulus of elasticity and the Poisson's ratio. We need not to provide yield stress of the materials as well as the corresponding plastic strains here. So let us start defining the material. So for both the parts, that is for the plate as well as for the bolt, we shall define the steel and the mechanical proper property. Here we will uh, provide only the elastic properties defined through the Young's modulus 2E5 and uh, the Poisson's ratio was 0 0.30. Remember that in this tutorial, will follow the system of newtons and millimeters consistency all throughout so okay so now having defined the properties we shall create a section with these properties so we'll call the name of the section as a section for example section lab and this will be solid homogeneous and property will be steel now we shall proceed for assigning this section to the various parts so let us first select the plate. Now we shall assign the sections. So select the regions. First of all, we have to select the regions. So we have selected the region. Done. And uh, this is okay, acceptable to us. Okay. So this means that we have assigned the property for uh, the plate. Now we shall proceed for uh, assigning this property for the bolt as well. Yes. So we'll assign so it will ask you select the region so select the entire region okay done and uh, this is a section lab that is acceptable to us okay so this means that we have completed the definition of the section assignment as well so we can proceed to the next module that is the assembly module in the assembly module we need to place the various components properly uh, in the right location and in the right orientation so that we develop the required final 3D model out of the assembly module. So as we know the 3D model consists of two plates as well as one bolt which means that for the part corresponding to the plate we have to create two instances and for the bolt we have to create only one instance. So let us proceed accordingly. So let us first create an instance of the plate. 
So this is my plate. Okay. So obviously we require one more instance of the plate. So we'll create one more instance plate. Okay, and ensure that you tick the auto offset. Okay. So now I would like to um, slightly offset this in the set direction. So I will go for uh, translate the uh, instance. So this is my instance. So done. I want to shift it by approximately say 75 mm. This is just for the easiness in uh, applying the operations. So 75 mm. Okay. So this is okay for me. Fine. Now we would like to rotate this uh, second instance about this vertical axis by 180 degree. This is uh, applied through this operation that is known as a rotate the instance. So press this rotate instance. Okay, now we have to select the instance. This is my instance. Okay, done. Now we need to specify the vertical axis. So that is around this vertical axis we want to rotate it. Okay, angle we want to rotate it by 180 degrees. Okay, so fantastic. So let us press it OK. Now we want to translate this plate in two directions. In the X direction, we want to translate in such a way that, that these two holes will be coaxial. And uh, in the uh, Z direction, we want to translate so that the two surfaces will match each other. Okay. So let us proceed for uh, applying the coaxial constraint first so that we ensure that these two holes are coaxial. So proceed for this coaxial constraint. So it will ask you select the cylindrical surface of the mobile instance and that of the fixed instance. And here we find that the directions of the two normals are opposite. We want to keep it in the same direction. So just flip it. Okay, now they are in the same direction. Okay. So now look here. We have uh, placed now the two holes are coaxial. Now we'll apply one more constraint that is known as the face-to-face -face constraint in order to ensure that these two plates, okay, these two uh, faces match each other. So we shall go for uh, the face-to-face -face constraint, okay. And now it, uh, it will ask you select a planar face. So this is my one planar face of the fixed instance or the mobile instance. Now this is another planar face. And I want to keep, this is okay for me, I want to keep the distance between them as 10 mm. So now, as you can see that, yes, the two plates are properly placed. Okay, the two instances are properly placed. And further, you can also see that the two holes are now coaxial. So you can just rotate it and have a view. Yes, you can see that the two holes are coaxial. So now we are ready to make an instance of the bolt and then start placing it in the right location. So go to the bolt, bolt, create an instance, we're fine. So as far as the bolt is concerned, we have to proceed in the same way as we did for the plates. First of all, we have to place this bolt coaxial with the holes. So we'll straight away go for applying the coaxial constraint. So press this button, okay. So it will ask you select the cylindrical surface of the mobile instance, select this surface, okay, and then the cylindrical surface of the fixed instance, select this surface, and you can see that the normals are in the opposite direction. So flip it. Okay, now we need to ensure that yes, they are in the same direction. This okay. So now as you can see that yes. Uh, the bolt is placed okay the bolt is placed coaxial with the holes now we need to uh, properly place it in the set direction so that the underside of this head it matches with the surface so that will achieve by using the same constraint that is known as the face to face constraint okay so select this face select also the face of this plate so the two normals are in the same direction, okay. And uh, we want to keep the distance between them as uh, 15 mm, which is the head thickness. Okay, so now you can see that yes, the bolt is also properly placed in the assembly. So you can also see the other side. So we just rotate it, okay. Yes, so you can see that the bolt is also rightly placed in the 
assembly. So this means that we have concluded the module assembly. Okay, now we can directly proceed for the other one that is the step. Okay, in the step we need to create a new step which will in which we will apply the load load on the plate. So start creating a plate. Please remember that the step in Abacus means it is a new analysis step. So as you can see that Abacus has already created a default step known as initial. Now we will uh, create our own analysis step and I will name it as a step load and the procedure type I will select as static general continue. So here you will find that there is the step manager. Okay. So here we need to uh, note one or two things. First thing is that the non-linear geometry has to be kept off because this is not a large displacement problem. It's a simple elastic analysis. So keep it off. And one more thing is in input incrementation, in the incrementation uh, will start with a small increment. Let me say that it's a 0 0.01. And we will ask Apacus use the maximum increment of 0 0.05 and the minimum will be 1e minus 5 and let me add say 10,000 and in the basic uh, there is one more parameter known as automatic stabilization remember that this is one uh, parameter to be set properly uh, so especially in problems like this wherein you know we have to define the interactions we have to define the the interaction between the contacts uh, we need to ensure that yes the solution converges fast and this is one uh, method that we have to make use of and here rather than specifying it as none specify it as uh, specified dissipated energy and keep all this default parameters same so this automatic stabilization parameter it will be taken up in detail in some other tutorial uh, that will be made separately for other parameters, important parameters in Abacus. So this means that we have set all important parameters associated with the step. So keep it as OK. Now in the step you will find that uh, we have to define one more parameter that is a create field output. In the create field output we instruct the Abacus what are the output parameters to be written to the output database ODB file. So let me call it as this as uh, lab okay continue i will select in general stresses and i will also uh, select for example the contact also right so okay so this means that we have completed the desktop definition as well now the balance modules like the interaction load mesh and finally the submission of the job and the visualization it will be taken up in a part B of this tutorial uh, till then bye.